All right, King, uh, we're going to get right to some more Lions talk with one of the great Lions of all time. He is a current Lions radio analyst. Lomas Brown joins us now live. Lomas, Lom. have you been able to contain your excitement for this week? How you doing, buddy? I'm, I'm doing great. Um, I'm at the Ultimate Fishing Show here at the No Buy Show Place, so that's why it looks this way. But, hey, look. I've had this nervous energy for about a week now, and uh, wow, I'm just I'm just a little nervous about Matthew coming back here and facing our Lions. I got confidence in the Lions, but man, Matthew Stafford and that LA team, they scare me a little bit. Hey, Long, for a second when I was looking at the curtains, I said, oh, he's about to be unveiled as the <laughs> Hall, of, Hall of Fame, baby. I was waiting for it. You know, the last time the Detroit Lions won a playoff game, you were on that team. Just talk about that energy after you guys won it for the city who hadn't won it before that for a very long time. Talk about that energy and what these guys are feeling. Yeah, it's great, man. It really is, Braylon. It's great how the city has embraced these guys. Um, it's great how Dan Campbell and that whole coaching staff the organization they put a team out there uh, they put some guys out there some resilient guys that are really being able to get it done and i think for me probably the most impressive thing is that these guys are so young this window of opportunity should be open for a while for the detroit lions so that's why i think the fans here they're so excited about what's going on they're embracing what's going on with the lions and I, I really think they're looking forward to it. I think that same old Lions, I yeah. think that's buried for good from now on here in Detroit. Hey, Lone, let me ask you one more question. You know, you talk about guys that have that electricity, guys that get you going. Benny Blades is one of those guys. Brett Perriman was one of those guys. We just talked about C.J. Gardner-Johnson. How important is he, not yes. just on the field, but the energy, the way he talks to the media, the way he talks to the players, how important is he for this team? You're right, Braylon, man. He brings that confidence. He really does. He's that brash guy. He's that cocky guy. But he's that guy that team makes respect because, because they see him go out there and get it done. CJ, to me, man, he's, he is the emotional leader. He's yeah. the guy that gets those guys, uh, get, gets those guys fired up. He's the guy, if, he, if you need someone to deliver the tough, hard hit, to get the excitement going, he can do that. And I'm just so happy he's back. I'm so happy he's back with the team in that locker room. I just think he brings so much to this team, even with his Super Bowl experience he has. And we know we don't have a lot of guys in that locker room with that experience. So the more guys, the more voices that these guys can hear that's been there, done that, I think it bodes well for the team. Hey, Lo, it's Maz. Thanks again for coming on with us. We love you, man. Go Lions. Got, got you, Maz. Hey, man, what's going through Jared Goff's mind in this game? Not only does he have to win a playoff game for Detroit, but he is playing maybe for his future here in Detroit as well. What's his feelings right yeah. now? You know what, Maz? If it was me and I'm not Jared, I wouldn't put too much on him. I, I, I don't think you go in carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. Yeah, he has a lot of things that's really, you know, it's going to be pivotal for for Jared to have a good playoff run. I know contract and everything else, perception, just everything else. But you can't, I don't think you put all that pressure on your shoulders going into a game like this because what that does to me, uh, it tightens me up. And, and, you know, and I think a lot of guys, you know, you get tight when you start worrying about things you can't control which is his contract, you know, where he's going to be. You know, those are things that Jared has no control over. What he has control over is how he plays on Sunday and what he can bring to this team to help this team uh, win his first playoff game in 30-some-odd years. Hey, in a little bit, uh, Lo, we're going to have one of your old teammates come into the studio. His name is Eric Kramer, the last quarterback oh, yes. to win a game and for the playoffs yes. for Detroit. What kind of guy was Eric Kramer for this team? So all you got to do is just tell him, uh, call him Brass when you see him. Yep. And he'll know who you talk to because, hey, man, this dude here, he got that nickname because Wayne would send him a play and Eric wouldn't like the play. And he would audible out the play. And, you know, he would do it. And Wayne would meet him on the sideline. Eric, damn it, run the play, I say run. 
They'll send an, another player Eric didn't like. He would change it again. So we just started calling him Brass for you know what, <laughs> Brass Balls. He had some big ones. Yeah, man, he yeah. had some big ones on him. So Woo! that's how he get the Brass nickname. Yeah. But a great guy, a guy that you guys know went through a lot with his son dying and, you know, him trying to commit suicide. But, man, has made a 180 flip, has gotten himself together. Now he's out inspiring people by the book that he's written. He's a great guy, man. I wish we wouldn't have lost him in 91 because I th I felt he should have kept leading our team. But you know how things happen, man. But you guys are a quality guy that you guys are getting ready to interview. Hey, uh, Lomas, it's um, Dan Campbell earlier today at the podium said Sam Laporta has gotten better every day. We'll see where it goes. Truly is a game time decision. What would it mean to the Lions offense if he can play? And what would it mean to the Lions offense if he can't play? Yeah, man, he means so much. If you think about think about everything they have Sam doing, they have Sam uh, blocking. Not only blocker, he has to block defensive ends. He has to block defensive tackles. They have him in constantly in motion. It seems like every offensive play they run, he's moving in motion. They got him tight to the line. They got him in the slot. They have him out wide. They'll have him in the backfield. They ask this young man to do so much and put so much on this plate. That's why I know it would be a huge, huge loss for him not to play. And I, I just think it would shorten up our playbook. Um, I think it would kind of take that threat, that tight end threat out the game plan. It's just so many things I think will be a trickle-down effect to us not having Sam Laporta in the lineup on Sunday. Lomas, there are so many battles within this game, whether it's Ben Johnson versus Sean McVay, whether it's Panay Sewell in the offensive line versus Aaron Donald and that young D tackle they got, that guy inside. He's he, That's Kobe. Hey, Kobe. Hey, he's a bad boy. He's a yes, bad boy. He you got the wide receiver core for the uh, Rams. You got the wide receiver core for the Lions. What is the matchup that you are most intrigued on watching on Sunday night? And see, see Braylon, that's why I'm nervous. Man, just think of some of these matchups that you, you, you've mentioned. Um, and everything. It, it, it is the one you mentioned with the young fella, Kobe Turner. Ooh. Him going up against Frank Ragnow yeah. and our uh, Jonah Jackson and going up to Graham Glasgow. Him and Aaron Donald, because Aaron Donald is still there. Last time and I that's checked. that's when your stars, that's right, bro. That's when your stars come to the top is when you get in crunch situations, when you're in playoff situations. So to me, if they can't get any interior push, any interior pressure on Jared, I think Jared's going to be all right back there in that pocket. That's the one that I'm looking at the most. And then the other one, Braylon, I'm looking at is their kicking game. Because they they missed like 15 kicks this whole year. So, and you know how Oosh. important that comes down to in playoff game. So, it, I wonder how Sean McVay is going to play things whether he'll kick a field goal, whether he'll go for it. Mm. You know, those are the little things that I'm going to look at, especially when it comes down to the kicking game, too. It's a great follow to my next question. How do you think Dan Campbell adapts to a playoff game, Lomas? Because we know he's like a gambling man out there. But yeah. this is the playoffs, and three points does matter. Uh, punting does matter sometimes. It's great to go for it and, and all that stuff, but man, it, a field goal could be extremely valuable in different spots. You need how, a kicker, though. How do you think he approaches <laughs> this game? <laughs> no. Man. <laughs> Man, Maz is wild. Maz wild. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, been saying it all year. Yeah. But you hey, Maz, I'm with you, man. I mean, I hope it doesn't come down to we have to rely on this guy to kick us a 50 yarder oh. because, hell, he's been missing some of these extra points. And what are those, 35, 40 yarders? So <laughs> I'm kind of with you on that. But, but to answer your question, what I think Dan Campbell's going to do, I think he's going to revert back or he's going to tune in his uh, inner Sean Payton, his inner Bill Parcells. Some of those great coaches that he pl he played with and that he played for, I think he's going to go back to that. 
because he knows how important these players playoffs are. This is sudden death, man. You lose this, we're out. It's over with. And I don't know if he's going to be willing to take some of the chances that he took during the season. I just think he reflects back on some of the great coaches that he played for and played under, and he would probably say, what would they do? And some of the sensible things that they do is take the points. Whenever you got an opportunity to take points, you have to take the points. Hey, Lomas, in continuing to talk about matchups in this one, obviously, uh, you know, Matthew Stafford against the Lions secondary is a big one. In two games within the last month, Nick Mullins, uh, not Joe Montana, Nick <laughs> Mullins has thrown for 807 yards in two Sheesh. games over the last month. What can the Lions defense do to stop or slow down Matthew Stafford? Maybe you get Houston back, Aleem McNeil's Trigger. back now with a game. So CJ GJ has a game under his belt. Is that what matters here to this defense? They, go, they are. They're going to have to switch it up. It, it's no way that I think we could just rush four guys and have success against Matthew Stafford. Now, the biggest thing is when you blitz them, and, and Braylon knows this, you got to disguise those blitzes. Yeah. Because if you let a veteran quarterback like Matthew Stafford see that blitz coming, he's going to hit his blitz pickups. He's going to hit his hot to the Super Bowl. He's going to make you pay. Yeah. It's, and Braylon, Against you Tampa. Are so right. Thank Against you. Tampa. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So you can't, like, if when Aaron Glenn wants to bring it, like I said, we're going to have to disguise it. But I do think we're going to have to bring pressure, man. I think the only way our, our secondary is going to have success against those receivers is we're going to have to push Matthew off his spot. We're going to have to make him move around. He can't be comfortable back there because if he gets comfortable back there, he's going to hurt us because I think individually those receivers that they have, man, they got some two of the top receivers in this league yeah. and this young guy puka and then you got cooper cup the triple threat a triple crown winner and that what you call it braylon the triple 100%. crown winner that he won yeah Last one to so, win man, it, Calvin we Johnson. got to be on code that's right that's hey right. lomas t tell the fans where they can come see you you're out there at the uh suburban collection show place the ultimate fishing show what's going on out there what do you got going on so i got two places a day i'm out here till four o'clock at the nova show place yeah, they work in the big fella, man. <laughs> they, they paying the big fella, too, though. But Braylon, they, they fatten in the pockets, too. Hey, so, as, as they should. I, <laughs> absolutely. So I'll be out here till 4 o'clock at the Nova Show Place. Then I'm heading over to the Gardner White on Hall Road, where I'm going to meet Herman Moore, uh, Corey Schlesinger, Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murray, and uh, Tim Walton, we have a tailgate. Oh, event Lord. At Not the, Tim. Uh, at the goal. Yeah, yes, yeah. Not Tim. Braylon, so you know. You already know, Braylon. And I got to deal with Herman, too. Don't forget Herman. Herman missing now. no checks. Don't. Herman <laughs> missing no checks. <laughs> Let me You're stop. Right, too. <laughs> Let me stop. Hey, hello. Great stuff, man. Enjoy the events. Uh, enjoy the weekend. Uh, thanks so much for giving us a couple of minutes here. Thanks, buddy. Hey, anytime, fellas. Love you, Take bro. care. You got I it. Thanks. You, the great Lomas Brown, everybody. Uh, great stuff there. No doubt about it.